Contrary to popular belief, estate plans are not just for the wealthy. The fact is that most people have something of value and could actually benefit from a good estate plan. Not only can it maximize the value of the estate, it also allows for informed decisions on your assets while you're still around. Uh, my guest is Mark Henry with Alloy Wealth Management in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome back, Mark. Can you start out by talking about the difference between wills and trusts? Sure. So both of them, when you think about wills and trusts, and I hear people say, well, I don't think I have enough money to have a trust. Well, stop that right there. First off, a trust shouldn't be expensive. It's a document done properly. It, it does not have to cost a lot. That's the first thing that people say is a trust I heard was very expensive. It doesn't have to be. But so a will is something that's going to be read at someone's passing. It's the reading of the will. It's the stuff that's in the will is going to go through probate and things like that. A trust is separate from that. A trust does not go through probate. So that's one of the first advantages. But there's a whole lot more than that. A lot of it comes to like privacy, Scott. So sometimes people don't want their, uh, at their funeral, if after their funeral, after they've passed, they don't want everybody knowing what they had or who got what or how it was distributed. Well, again, with a will, that's public record. Everybody's going to know exactly what you had and what was there and how that went. However, with a trust, that bypasses that whole process. So you have an executor of the trust, the trustee, and they distribute the assets that are left in the trust, and nobody has to know what was in there. It's a very private matter. So a lot of times it's done for that reason. A lot of the time it's done for uh, planning, for future planning. And when you say, well, yeah, I understand estate planning. No, I'm talking about a different type of planning. I'm talking about a planning where what if there's a, you know, things haven't worked out quite like we want, and maybe we don't have enough money. We're thinking that in retirement we probably, you know, wish we had more. Um, and there's a possibility that at some point, if something goes wrong in our plan, that one of us could maybe end up in a long-term care or in a situation where we could be getting to where we run out of money. Trust can be very valuable in helping to protect assets uh, and keep assets in the family while still allowing someone to qualify for other programs. So a lot of variety there. Bottom line is most families need a complete estate package. So, Mark, you have indicated that estate planning can be pretty complex, but it's not just once and done, is it? Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. When I see people and they bring in their stuff, they say, I've got a will in this. They bring them in. Typically, it's loose documents. Maybe they're stapled up in the left-hand corner, and they haven't been looked at in years a lot of times. That's not an estate plan. Remember who you're doing this for? You're really like, when I think of my estate plan, I didn't do my estate plan for me. My estate plan's been done for my family. So it's very important that one, it's organized, it should be in a binder, it, you have to make sure it was filed. Was it filed? Was the durable power of attorneys? Was the medical power of attorneys? Was all that filed? Was the trust filed? Is it all clear? And is there instructions? When I think of an estate plan, I want the instruction sheet. So when I do ours, the way I have them done, the, like if you start with say the durable power of attorney, the first thing you see is the instruction sheet of how you would use that document. Then you turn the page and behind it is the actual document. Maybe it's the medical power of attorney. Here's how you use it. Behind it, there's the document. You have to review those at least once a year, see if there's changes that need to be made, if there's beneficiaries that need to be taken off. Did something change materially that we need to adjust inside the plan? Those things have to happen. So when you are working on someone's estate plan, how do you use life insurance? So life insurance can be used a lot of ways. When, when you think about me, I'm still pretty young, I like to at least say I am, and I have a type of life insurance called term. And the idea behind it was, when I took it out a long time ago, was it would give my family enough money to get my wife and children to a certain point in life, a certain time, a certain place. Well, very soon my term insurance is going to go away. That's fine, that's what it was designed for. But that's not all the life insurance I have. Life insurance is still one of the greatest wealth transfer vehicles left. It's a way to pass money on in one of the most tax efficient manner, manners possible. Well, Mark, finally, is an attorney necessary here? <laughs> is an attorney always necessary? Well, I know a lot of people that would say they're not necessary, <laughs> but no, that's not true. Yeah, an attorney's necessary. So when you think about this, I'm a certified estate planner, Scott, but I don't prepare these documents. We use flat fee attorneys so we can get the documents done in the most cost-effective manner, but there is still things that need to be done by attorneys, and they do serve a purpose, and I'm very happy to work with some really competent and really good ones. All right, Mark, thanks again. Thanks for having me on today, Scott. My guest has been Mark Henry in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thank you for watching Retirement News Online.